awesome. Tomorrow, yes, Blatt's going to be fun. Okay, to start today, um, cacti or a cactus plant, um, they come in so many different forms. Um, I actually have one right here. Check this one out. Here he is. Look how cute he is. I'm a little guy right here. He's on the windowsill. Um, cacti are really fun to draw because they come in many different varieties. Last year I was out west um, hiking in Utah and in Vegas. And, um, you know, I got to see some really cool cacti plants on uh, the ones that have little flowers coming out of them. And they're just so different than anything that you find, you know, around here in Pennsylvania. Um, so they're, they're really unique plants. And they're really fun to draw because they're they're simple. You can simplify them, um, and you can, you know, sometimes the simple the simple drawings, simple artwork, just looks really good. It, it makes them um, for really well decor in your home. Um, so I'm going to show you a few different things, a few different ways that you can draw these. So here's a couple drawings, simple drawings that I did in the past. Um, so you can see what we're looking at are lots of lines and shapes. So when you draw something, you want to break it down into lines and shapes. So if you look at these, you can see you have some curves, some curved lines. You've got some um, shapes that kind of look like ovals and circles. Um, you've got, you know, um, you've got uh, pointy lines right here. You've got wavy lines. You've got bumpy lines. So we're going to walk through. I'm going to walk you through and kind of show you how to draw a few of these. Now, the sheet of paper that you're using doesn't matter what size. You know, you decide what size you want to use today. I'm going to use this size, and I'm using mixed media paper. Um, the paper that you do choose does matter. Uh, it can be a little overwhelming when you go to the craft store because, well, gosh, there are so many different kinds of paper, and you're probably like, what the heck do I get? Um, you can read on the front, and it tells you, like, what supplies you can use with what paper. Uh, but mixed media paper is great because you can basically use anything on it. So that's what I'm going to use today is mixed media paper. So why don't you go ahead and get yourself a pencil. You want to make sure it's nice and sharp. Now you also probably want an eraser. Now I'm going to turn my paper this way so I can make a few different um, drawings. I'm going to do a couple different drawings so you can see them. I'm going to just scoot some of this stuff out of the way. There we go. These are these ones right here, these big ones. These are ones that I've done in the past. And this is crayon and watercolor. So you can see how they look with crayon and watercolor. All right, crayon and watercolor. Okay, and then these ones I use pencil and then marker. All right, so to get started, the first thing that you want to do is we're going to create the planter. So that's the very first thing that we're going to do is create the planter. So the planter is what the cacti is in, so it grows because it definitely needs a little closer here definitely need something to grow in um, so what we want to do is grab yourself your pencil and I'm going to start over on this side by making my planter now I'm going to go with a simple type of planter like these ones like the little terracotta ones or the one that I just showed you this one right here I'm going to make my guy look like this maybe I should just set him over here actually I better not because I might get pricked by this guy because he's sharp he's sharp he actually came from a big giant plant that's over like a hundred years old um okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to start by making the sides the sides of my planter so i'm going to make the sides of my planter first i want to leave plenty of room up here at the top of my paper so i can draw the actual plant all right so i'm going to make the sides of my planter now you guys are not going to want to press super hard with your pencil because if you make a mistake, you want to be able to erase it, right? Okay, and this is very hard to see. I can see that, so I'm going to bring it a little closer for you. So there's the sides. I have slightly curved the sides because I want this to look three-dimensional. I want it to look like it is not flat. All right. So I want it to look like it is not flat. 
Okay, now what I wanna do is I want to draw the bottom portion of this. So I'm gonna close this off right here. So I'm gonna draw a line there. So I'm gonna close this off like so. And then I'm gonna do the same thing at the top here, but I'm not gonna make the line perfectly straight. I wanna make it a slightly curved. Just slightly curved. Because you want to be able to see, you want to, you want it to look like there's there's more to it, that something is inside of here. Almost kind of looks like um kind of like a boat on the water. But we don't have the water in there. I wore my art overalls today. I got my overalls today, guys. Got my art overalls on. If you don't have a pair of these. You got to get yourself up here. Look at this. You can put stuff in the pockets. You've got pockets everywhere. It's great. It's these are great, especially when you're an artist because you can just shove stuff in all your pockets. Um, that is a good question. Uh, depending on the shape of the cacti, do we want to have the paper vertically? Yes, you can have it vertical or horizontal. It's up to you. You decide. I'm going to do mine this way, um, horizontal, so I can show you two different um, types of drawings. Maybe I'll make one of my planters smaller and one of them a little bit bigger. So we'll see. All right, so now that I have the top portion of my planter, I want to go ahead and make two slanted lines for the sides of the planter. Now I'm pressing pretty hard because I want you guys to be able to see this. That's what I have so far. Now I want to give this, I want to add a bottom to this, right? So I want to have a bottom here. And so when I create the bottom, I want to have it kind of curve just a tiny bit. I don't want it to go straight across. I want it to have a slight curve to it. By having a slight curve at the top and at the bottom, it makes this look more three-dimensional. It makes it look so it's not so flat. So you want to give it a little bit of a curve at the bottom. Just a little curved line at the bottom. Okay, something like that. There we go. So now I have my first planter. Now I'm not gonna worry about anything up here. I'm gonna leave that alone for now. But what I am gonna do is I'm gonna jump next door, right here, and I'm gonna make another planter. I might wanna make it a little bit different this time. Maybe I wanna make it a little taller. Maybe I wanna make the shape a little different. I think I'm gonna make it smaller. I think I'm gonna make a couple, I think I'm gonna make a couple small ones. Make the sides first. Okay, there we go. There is my second little planter. I want this to look three-dimensional. I want it. Sorry. Okay. So now I have my second little planter. Now I have space to add one more right here, so I'm going to do that. It's like there's a there's like a family of what's going on here. There is a family of cacti plants, and I don't know about you guys, but I love plants, so I have a whole bunch of these. I have a whole bunch. I'm gonna make one more. I think I'm gonna try to make it so it's like an in-between size between these two. I'm gonna make this a little curve right here at the top. You always wanna curve that at the top. And then a couple slanted lines. Okay. There we go. So now I have my three, come a little closer here. 
I've got my three cacti um, planters. So now I can start drawing the actual cactus plants. Um, so like I said before, they come in many different shapes and many different sizes. So the first one I'm going to show you how to do is this one right here. This one right here. This one's pretty easy. Okay. So what you're going to do is these look like these look like l just leaves, like really pretty easy leaves. So I always do one like in the middle. I do one in the middle. So I'm going to start about here. I'm going to, if you want to, this might be a little bit easier. Draw a straight line first. Draw a straight line first. And that's the middle. That would be like right here. That'd be like this line right here. Then draw each side. So start here and then come down. Like that. Okay. Now from here, what we could do is let's make another one. So we want to show, though, that there's some overlapping. If you look at this one, see how there's some overlapping like these guys right here? These guys are behind this one. And then these guys on the outside are behind these ones. So we want to show that they're overlapping. So to do this, I'm going to start at this leaf that I already, well, actually you can make the straight line in the middle if you want to. You could go like this. Looks kind of crazy. But then from here, you start at the tip and then you go down until you get to the leaf. You have to stop. You can't draw through it. And then come to the other side and draw until you get to the bottom. Same thing on the other side. Start at the tip. Okay. Now from here, we want to make two more. We want to put one over on this side. And then we want to put another one over on this side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a line. I think I'm going to have the line go like this and then maybe like one here and it's okay if you run out of space and it goes off the edge of your paper that makes it more interesting because when somebody looks at it they're wondering what's going on beyond there they want to they, their brain starts to formulate their ideas about what's happening beyond the picture okay so I'm going to start at the tip draw my curve line until I get to a leaf I have to stop and then draw a curved line until I get down to my planter. Same thing on the other side. All right. So here is my first plant. Now, I have some space at the top. I have some space up here at the top. So I'm going to show you a really cool um, type of cacti plant that you can make. I tried this yesterday. I think it turned out really good. Let me show you what it looks like. The next one I'm going to show you how to make is this one right here. It kind of looks like um, like a fern. I'm not sure if you know what a fern is, but it, it kind of looks like a fern. And to make this one right here, what you're going to do is you are going to... I'm going to put it up above here. I'm going to have it go like this. So it's behind these guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a curved line. Let's see if I can do this. I'm going to start here. I'm going to make a curved line that goes like this. Maybe not that curved. It's really hard to do this um, in the air. So something like this. Make that line really light, though, because you're going to erase it. Yes, you can put lines in the first one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is like the fern-like leaf, the fern-like plant that I'm making right here, this line. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to make a very wiggly line. I'm going to make a wiggly line, and I'm going to make it on each side. So I'm going to go like this. I'm going to start. I'm going to start at the tip here. I'm going to start at the tip. And I'm going to, above the tip, I'm going to make a little line like this. Okay, looks kind of crazy. 
doesn't look like anything yet. And then I'm going to turn my paper and I'm going to make some lines that go like this. Now with this plant, these little pieces that pop out, they're bigger towards the middle. Now I got to there, so I have to skip it. I, have to, I can't draw through it. I can skip a space. Okay, something like that. I'm gonna turn it the other way. Now what I want to do is I want to do the same thing on the other side. So I want to do the same thing up here. Okay, so I'm going to start back up at the top. Let's start back up here. And I'm going to make my wiggly line. I like drawing these lines, they're really fun. Okay, there we go. Now if I wanted to, I have some space, I could add another one over here if I wanted to. It could go this way, it could go this way. You could make some more of these up here if you wanted to. You really have lots of choices. All right. Okay, well, let's move along to the next type of um, cacti plant. So the next one that I'm going to show you is this guy right here. We're going to do this one right here. So this one is really simple to do. It is basically, it looks a lot like um, part of an oval or part of a circle. So we're going to do this one next. And then on the top of it, it has a little flower. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this little guy right here, and I'm going to make a mark where I want the top of it to be. So I think I want the top of it, I don't know, I want the top of it to be like right here. So I'm going to make a little dot where I want the top to be. I want my top to be like right there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw from that dot a curved line until I get down to my planter. Now, if something gets in the way, just jump over it and continue drawing. Okay, I have something that looks like this. And now what I want to do here is I want to separate this. So I can make some curved lines. I start at the dot and I make a curved line that goes down. And then I make another curved line like this. That's what I have so far. Now, the top up here, that's where you're going to put your flowers. So the flowers go up here. Now, to make the flowers, the flowers, you can make them very simple and pointy like this one. Or you can make them more rounded if you want to. It really just depends on what you want to do. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make mine pointy. So I'm going to start at that the tippy top, and I'm going to make a shape that looks like that. Make a shape that looks like that. Then I'm going to make another shape next to it that looks like that. It's kind of like I'm doing a mini version of this right up here. And I'm going to make another one over here. There we go. Isn't that cute? Look how cute that is. Okay. Does anybody have any questions so far? Is everybody doing good? Any questions? I'm going to wait a minute. Everybody kind of do their drawing. 
do their drawing. Okay, no questions, everybody's good? Okay, well let's move along. So the next thing that we wanna do is on this, I have, I have one little planter left. So the next one that I wanna show you how to do is this guy right here. We're gonna do this guy right here, all right? So to make this one, to make this one right here, uh, Carrie, when are you drawing? Well, you should be, you can be drawing all of these right along with me. Unless you want to watch them, you know, unless you want to watch them being drawn and then go back and do your own, that's fine. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to show you how to draw is this one right here. Oh, yes, you can customize the pot. Of course you can. You can make it as jazzy as you'd like. Check out these ones. These ones have got, these ones are real fancy. Here's another one. Yeah, you can definitely, you can definitely customize them. Okay. All right, so this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to make this type of cacti right here. And I'm going to get the friendly giraffe out of the way. And I'm going to move splat, too. Have some more space. All right, so there we go. This is what we've got going on here. And I'll pull this one up here. You can see these guys. All right, so now over here, I'm going to make a shape that looks almost like a circle uh, or part almost part of it. It's part of a circle. See this one? It's almost like a full circle, but not really. And it, you don't want it to be perfect. It doesn't need to be perfect at all. Cacti plants are not perfect. They're, they're, you know, all different shapes. So I'm going to start over here and I'm going to make my shape. It's kind of like an oval, kind of like a circle. So that's what I have right now, right there. It doesn't look like a cacti yet. It will. Okay. So on top of this, what I want to do is I want to add little babies that are growing off of it. So if you look at this one, see all the little babies that I've added? So I've got this one here. I've got this one here. I got a little baby right here. So you can add baby ones on top of this. So I'm going to add some and they can be they can be more like an oval shape or you can make them more rounded like a circle you know an oval is is kind of squished and stretched out um a circle you know perfect a circle is a perfect circle so you decide how you want to do that i think i'm going to make one over here now what you want to try to avoid is making this look like a mouse you know, like Minnie or Mickey Mouse by putting, you have the one the one shape and then you put two shapes on each side, on each side that are about the same, then it'll look more like a mouse. And you know, we're not really, that's not what we're trying to achieve today. So kind of think about that as you are drawing. So I'm gonna make another shape over here, but I'm gonna make it, you know, a little bit different. So that's what I have there. And then I can add some little ones on top of there. another one over here so there's that okay now the next thing I want to do is you see this little empty spot that I have right here I can fill this in with some other type of cacti plant. If I wanted to make something like this, I could. I can make something like this, but maybe like a miniature one. Or I could do something totally different. I think what I'm going to show you guys is I love, I forgot about these ones. I have these ones, this one right here. You see this, this plant right here? I think that these ones would look really cool to draw. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay. Set this one here. All right. So to make these, 
these guys right i cannot remember that they have they have a name i can't remember so i can't remember what it's called it has a special name so what i'm going to do is i'm going to draw a bunch of lines right in here so i'm going to make one that kind of goes like this and then i'm going to make one that kind of comes down and then maybe i'm going to even make one that kind of comes over like this all right so they look kind of crazy i just made these squiggly lines well they're they're curvy lines right here so i've got one that went up and curled one that went down and kind of curled and then one that kind of went over to the side and is over top of this cacti right here okay so now what i want to do on each of these lines is i want to add some shapes i want to add the little um leaves to these lines and the leaves are very easy look at the leaves let's look at the leaves so you can see that how easy they are they are almost full circles or full more like ovals actually so they're ovals so you're going to draw ovals all on each side along these lines so that's what i'm going to do here as well so i'm going to make one at the bottom And then I'm going to fill them in. And do them on both sides. Over to the next one. Don't be afraid to overlap so it makes your art interesting and if your your leaves aren't perfect shapes that's fine mine got a little some of mine got a little weird guys also when you're working on art don't be afraid to pick your paper up and turn it turn it you can turn it as much as you'd like it's easier to turn it than it's trying to move your arm in weird ways because your arm only moves so much you can't really like turn your arm all the way around but you can your paper all right so here are my cacti drawings so far this is what i have so far now I could fill these in much more if I wanted to because I do have some empty space. I have some space up here where I could add another one of these or maybe I wanted to add some of these guys. I could I could fill this all in over here. You could add flowers to some of these. So if you wanted this one right here to have flowers, you could add flowers to it, all right? Now, what we wanna do is we want to you guys want to figure out how you want to fill this in how you want to fill this in but before we do that i want to show you something so if you look at this one this one's finished and you can see like the inside of the planter see how it's got like little pebbles in there i drew little pebbles in there you can draw this if you still see some of the planter like where the dirt would be so let me show you how you would draw this so I don't have a whole lot of space on here to show you because, you know, I drew a lot of them and filled up a lot of the space, but I can show you in one of them. So this guy right here, I want to draw a curved line. Actually, I'm just going to go all the way like this. So you can kind of see what's inside there. Everybody see that? And I want to do the same thing over here. Now, there's just a tiny, tiny, tiny little area right here. So from here to here is all I'm going to draw. But just drawing those little lines really changes the way the planter looks. It now makes it look deep. And it looks like, you know, you could see the dirt inside of there. Okay. So that... That is how you draw the cacti. Now, what you want to do is there's a couple places where you want to erase. Now, this, this guy right here that looks like a fern, that section that we did right in the middle, you can erase that if you want to. When I did mine, 
this example, I erased the middle line. But you, you don't have to. You could use it. You could have it become part of the art itself. So you decide how you want to do that. Um, the way that you can color these in is you can do many different things. So I've done it a bunch of different ways. So for this one, these ones, let me just explain how these ones were filled in. These ones were filled in, um, they were outlined first using crayon. All the outlining was done using crayon. Crayon has wax in it. Once it was done getting outlined with crayon, it was then filled in with watercolor paint. Okay, so this is all this green right in here, the big, the big areas, that is watercolor paint. So it was outlined with crayon, you press really hard with the crayon, and then you fill it all in with watercolor paint. So that's how these ones were done, all right? Now, there's a little bit of a difference to this one right here. This one, crayon, uh, yes, crayon and marker and um, watercolor was used for this project. So the way that this one was done is, the cacti, they were outlined first with, with marker. Um, this was kind of filled in a little bit too with marker, making little pebbles. This right here was outlined with crayon. Just the planter was outlined with crayon. And then everything was filled in with watercolor. Now, I don't know what every all the supplies that everybody has, but yes, that's exactly, Carrie, that's what I'm going to do. Is I'm going to outline everything with a sharpie first and then when i'm done outlining with a sharpie i'm going to fill things in with watercolor paint and i, I think i'm going to use a little bit of crayon before i go to watercolor paint too so i'm going to start that process now if you don't have sharpie you can color this in however you'd like it doesn't really matter you decide i'm just going to walk you through the process that i was going that i like to use uh, for filling these in and that is sharpieing everything first so if you do have a Sharpie or you have some sort of um, black marker or colored pencil or crayon, you could outline, you could outline that right now. I'm gonna start outlining. So you're going over all the pencil lines that you like. You don't wanna trace over pencil lines that you don't like. Now this plant right here, the first one that we did, it has a lot of lines in it, so you can go ahead and draw all of those lines if you'd like to. Now when you use a Sharpie, you wanna go slow. You don't wanna to press too hard because you'll damage the tip of the Sharpie, but you definitely wanna apply some pressure. That's what I have so far. Now I'm going to move on to my next one. I think I'm going to start with the flowers first. Right here. Okay, 
there's that one. Now I'm going to move on to this one. Gosh, has anybody ever um, tried to repot a cactus plant? Oh my gosh. <laughs> there is um, a, a cacti plant that's that's been in the family for a really long time. It's like, gosh, it's probably almost 100 years old. So it had to be separated because it was really big. And the needles on it are very, very sharp. And when they get in your skin, it really irritates your skin and it hurts, definitely hurts, does not feel good. So I had to figure out, oh my gosh, how am I going to separate this and then repot it? So you should have seen, you should have seen what this looked like. I had a rope. I had on like these giant leather gloves. I, um, I also had like, um, pliers, uh, and um, wire cutters so I could like grip onto it without like having to touch it and I was able to pull things apart but it was it was hilarious I felt like I was I had like a lasso around it it was <laughs> trying to pull it apart it was crazy but I was able to do it now the easy the littler ones are much easier you can kind of just if you're really careful and you have gloves on you can just pull them away from the, the main plant um and then you can replant them they're really easy to replant and start you know start new ones um i have a, a baby garden of them let me show it to you it's super cute it needs some water but um here it is look at this little baby one isn't that adorable <laughs> so cute. So these are all babies that were growing from the big one. And I have, um, I have them growing. It's like a little mini, it's like a little mini desert. And the, the turtle and the frog are going for a ride through the desert. <laughs> Okay, back to the sharpie. Is there any projects that you guys would like to see? Something that you might like to do? The next free art class is Friday. And you know what? I haven't picked out the project yet. I have some ideas, but I haven't. You know, I haven't decided what Friday's class is going to be. And also remember, Fridays are fancy, formal Fridays. So every Friday, I get all dressed up and teach art class. And I invite you to join me. You know, get yourself fancy and make some art. It's super fun. Something to look forward to. Especially because we can't really go a whole lot of places where you can get dressed up right now. Um, so I think it gives you something fun to look forward to on a Friday. When you guys are done with your art today, make sure you post it um, on Facebook and tag RLB Art Studio so I can see what you made. I love seeing what you guys create. It is so much fun. It's very rewarding. It makes my job so awesome. Okay, so that's all the sharpening. And while you guys are finishing up your sharpening, I am going to, oh, a unicorn. Hmm, a unicorn. That's a good idea. Okay, I could possibly do a unicorn. I have, I have quite a few unicorn projects that I've done. I also have like a fun llama. Um, let's see. I'm going to pull the name for the winner. So you guys continue sharpening. I will be right back.
Okay, so <laughs> the llama. Yeah, the llama is fun. So on Friday, I announced that there was another giveaway. So the giveaway is that you get to take a online Zoom art class for free. Any class you want. It could be one that's coming up this week. It could be one that's already happened. Or you can wait and use it till next week. Or, you know, many weeks away. So you get to attend a free art class. I have, oh yes, something with elephants. I have an elephant project. It's really fun. So I have all my my uh, participants, everybody that um, you know followed the the entered the giveaway by following the rules. And let's see what we have here. The winner of a free art class is. All right, here we go. Who's it gonna be? Lori Orlowski or Lowski. Lori, if you're here today, you are the winner. You get to take a free art class. I will um, send you a private message on Facebook, but congratulations to Lori. You are the winner of the giveaway. So you get to attend any art class that you would like for free. Okay, so back to the project. So once you have everything Sharpie, if you are Sharpie and you want to take an eraser and erase all the pencil lines that you still see. Uh, you know what? You can draw a background if you want to. I'm not going to do that today, um, but you you definitely can draw a background if you want to. Also give them, give your little plants um, something that they're sitting on, like a... a a shelf or um, a table, you know, you would just draw. Actually, I'm going to do that right now because right now they do look like they're floating in the air. So I'm going to draw a line. So I'm going to start anywhere I want. It could be up tall. It could be up higher or lower, but I'm going to go a little lower. So I'm going to draw, 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 jump over my plant, draw, 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 jump over, draw, 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 jump over if I need to, and draw, draw, draw. So there we go. So now they look like they're sitting on something rather than just floating in the air. And I'm going to erase any pencil lines that I see. Okay, erase your pencil lines. Now, um, cacti plants, they're pointy, right? They have, not all of them, but most of, well, cacti, the cactus plant is definitely have, have spikes, but some of these other ones do not have spikes. But to make them look spiky, we have to do something to them. We want to create some little um, detail lines that show that they're spiky. So let me just get rid of this line here, erase this, and let me show you how to add the spikes. So if you look at this one right here, you can see that there's like these tiny little lines. And this makes you think that it is prickly. So you want to do the same thing on yours. And I just take my black marker and I just make tiny little lines. Next, you know, and I scatter them around. They could even kind of go above it because they would be coming. You would see these little spikes right there. You'd see them all over, actually. The ones here. So these are just little tiny lines that you're making. So now when you look at it, it doesn't look smooth. It looks spiky. And then if you want to in here, this one right here, you can do the same type of thing. It's almost like you're drawing like a like the beginning of a snowflake. And I draw these, I draw these right on the lines. So I draw, you can make an X and then a line. That's probably good. Okay, 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little, I'm done with my marker. I'm pretty done with my marker. I'm going to take a, some crayon and I'm going to jazz up my planters a little bit with some crayon. So I have all my crayons here that I want to use and it can be, you know, it can be any color you want. Doesn't matter. I think I'm gonna go, you know, I, I do want these to look like they're made out of terracotta. So I think I'm gonna go with like um like this color. And I'm going to decorate these a little bit. Not a whole lot. I think for this one, I'm just gonna make some lines that go like this. Now I'm pressing hard because I'm gonna use watercolor over top. And I want to still see my crayon lines, so I need to press hard. And then maybe in here, I'm gonna do like a cool design like this. And then over here, maybe I'm gonna make some like polka dots. Okay. Now, if I have some really small areas, like the flower right here, and maybe these little leaves, I might be better off coloring those in with crayon than trying to paint those. So I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. Plus, with crayon, I have more colors of green than I do with paint. So I'm going to start coloring these in. And I'm going to vary the colors. So I'm using like this color that I'm using is called green yellow. So I'm coloring a few of these in with green yellow. So would you guys like to learn how to draw a gnome, like a garden gnome? And then make like a garden gnome house. I have a very fun project for that. In fact, over Christmas time, I made a whole, at Christmas time and Valentine's Day, I made a whole bunch of gnomes. Christmas gnomes, love gnomes, but I did them in painting. I painted them, uh, but I was thinking that it would be fun to do uh, a, no a garden gnome drawing. Would that be cute? And then I also have a really fun drawing of um, like where the gnome would live, like his house, like you draw the gnome's house. Now you guys like that? I think that's gonna that would be super fun. Gnomes are so cute. Or like trolls too. I was thinking like trolls. We could do some sort of trolls. Um, I was hiking a couple weeks ago and um I found, you know, the hike the trail, there was like this little creek this tiny little creek and there was moss and everywhere and it looked it looked like it's where like gnomes and fairies lived i was like oh my gosh this looks like they would really live here it was very it was very cool and then i started thinking about art projects and what we could do and you know my brain goes all the time i'm always thinking always thinking it never really shuts off because i'm always thinking about oh well that would be a fun art project maybe we should try that Okay, so now I'm gonna move on. So I'm just filling in the little little areas. Little areas sometimes are hard to paint with watercolor. Um, so I'm filling in some of these little areas with crayon. But I am pressing hard. I am pressing hard. There we go. So I think that looks. this is looking pretty good. What do you guys think? I can't wait to see yours. Okay, the last thing I am gonna color in with crayon is I'm gonna color in uh, this flower right here. 
color that flower in. Oh, what color do I want to use? I think I'm going to use like this um, red violet. Oh yeah, that's a good color. It's like a color. I bought a couch that's this color. I love it. All right, so now I am ready to add some paint to this. So what I'm gonna do with the paint is I'm going to first, I'm gonna start by painting. Well, you can start, actually, you can start anywhere you'd like, but if you are using watercolor paint, here's the rule with watercolor paint. Wet water wants to go to wet water. So if you have, let's say you've painted this green, this is green, right? All of this is green right here, one color of green. So you paint that and then you're ready to move on to here. Well, you don't want to paint this until this is dry. Because what will happen is, let's, let, let's say I want to paint this orange and this is green. And I do this first and then I come and I do this, but this is still wet. What will happen is the colors will bleed and blend together. And it will make like a brown because orange and green, once you mix orange with um, colors that aren't warm colors, it goes to brown. So the colors will bleed together. And sometimes you want this, but sometimes you don't. So what you have to do is you have to work in sections. So you'd paint this let it dry while this is drying go over somewhere else and paint then come back to this and fill up the rest so you kind of have to jump around when you're working with watercolor because you don't want wet paint to touch wet paint because it will blend and bleed together i hope that makes sense it's so much easier to explain and show you when you guys are in the studio but you know we're not in the studio today we are what did i do with my water ah here it is um, we are not in the studio, so, you know, I have to kind of explain how that works. Is anybody else using watercolor, or am I the only one today? Okay, so I have my brushes. Uh, let's see, here's my watercolor paint. It's getting pretty low. So what I wanna do here is I'm gonna start, I'm gonna go with this lighter green right here. Now to add, to make this work, you have to add water to the paint. You have to activate it and then swirl it around. The more water you add, the more diluted the color is going to be. So it's not gonna be as strong. The less water you add, the stickier the color, the paint's gonna be and the, um, the darker, more vibrant the color will be. You can always paint in layers too. So you can put a light layer down and then you can go back and add to it. So I'm gonna paint this green. Now, if you use Sharpie, you can go right over top and it still shows up. Try using more than one color. So maybe I wanna add like a little bit of this blue in here. Oh yeah, I like that. Add a little bit of blue. Makes it look more like three dimensional. I'm going to paint all of these this light green and also you know try adding yellow try adding yellow to green you'll get more of like a lime green color oh yeah your old oh, watercolor pencils yeah watercolor pencils are nice i like those too One thing I do like about watercolor is you can fill in areas very quickly. I'm gonna add a little bit of this blue back in here.
So on Friday, I'm going to share what another giveaway is going to be. So on Friday, I hope you guys come back on Friday and take art class on Friday. And maybe I'll see some of you tomorrow for the splat class. And Wednesday for the rainbow waterfall. Okay, so this is wet. So what I want to do is I want to go someplace else where this isn't touching. So I think I'm going to jump over here and paint this guy. Now I want that one, I think, to be like darker green, more like, um, more like grass green. And my, my green's getting really low, but there's still some in there. Look at, look at how low it is, but there's still some along the edges, so I can still use this. Now, because I use crayon here, I can go right over top of the crayon if I press hard. Okay, there's my green. There we go. I can darken it up by adding another layer over top of it if I want to. Okay. All right, so that is done. Now what I want to do is I want to move someplace else where there's nothing wet around it. So I think I'm going to go to here and paint this now. I'm going to go, I think I'm going to go with, um, I think I want to do this yellow. There we go. We've got some yellow in there. If you wanted to add another color in, you could. Maybe I'll add a little bit of orange in here. Maybe like some orange down here too. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is this, you know, I can probably come back to here and see what's going on. Is this still wet? Well, it's a little tacky, but I could probably paint the bottom of this right here. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to paint that red. Paint this red. Now, if you want to remake this project, you have the opportunity to do so because this video, even though it's live right now, I will repost it. It will, it will post to RLB Art Studios Facebook page. So if you want to watch this again, you can. Um, if you want to share it with a friend, you can. Um, there's a lot of free art videos on the RLB Art Studio Facebook page, um, so you can go back and watch all sorts of art project videos. Okay. And then maybe up here, I don't want, I want this to be like more orange. 
right up here. I don't want it to be too dark because I want to still be able to see those lines that I made. There we go. Okay. So guys, I'm going to stop at this point. Um, what I would continue to do is I would continue to fill this in with color. And then when I was done with the watercolor paint, um, I, once the watercolor paint is dry, you can go over top of it with crayon. You can go over top of watercolor paint with marker. You can go over top of watercolor paint with oil pastel. So you can go back in and add all sorts of details if you'd like to. But that is as far as I'm going to go with this project today. Um, before I end this video, um, does anybody have any questions? I hope that you loved creating the cacti art. It's very fun. You have so many choices. You can do so much with this. You can, I mean, I can make these over and over and over and over again, and they would never look the same because you have so many choices. Nobody has any questions? Okay, so I would love to see these. So if you could, please, please, please post some of your art. Show me what you made during this art class. Tag RLB Art Studio, or you can tag me if you want to leave a review. You can review RLB Art Studio and tell everybody what you think about RLB Art Studio. A lot of people read those reviews. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you, those of you that have donated to the studio. Um, your donations are helping me run everything smoothly so I can be operational. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you. It's greatly appreciated, um, especially this is such a weird time. Um, so I appreciate um, your donations. They mean a lot. So thank you so much. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this art class today. I will be back on Friday for a free live art class. We shall see what it is. Will it be a no? or will it be a llama or will it be a unicorn I don't know I guess you'll have to wait and see I'll be posting about it in a couple days but again if you're looking to take more art classes and you want something that's a little more personal more like being in school or being in the studio where I get to see you I can help you with your projects check out the zoom classes I'm gonna put that link in right now so you can check out all of the zoom classes that RLB Art Studio is offering. You can see some of those. Everybody has a wonderful day and um, I enjoyed making art with you this morning. So thanks a bunch. I'll see you guys soon.